Hello and welcome to another week of Energy and Star Sign readings with myself, Thomas Yamak, and my guest Kelly Brooks. And I can just see my head isn't fucking in it. Um, so this whole thing is a bit weird, the way it is done. But my sugars are a little low, so that's my excuse. I'm not going to change it. It's going to probably going to look great, you know. So so just imagine you're recording this on a hill. <laughs> anyway, this is my guest Kelly Brooks. First time you're here. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you very much. And we're looking at a week of April the 19th to the 25th. And as usual, we look at the overall energy first before we start with the first star sign. Now we're still in Aries. We're changing to Taurus, so to speak, midweek on the 21st. And since we're looking at the week of the 19th to the 25th, the Taurus energy that is sort of taking over on the 21st officially is already there quite strongly. And because Taurians, no offense, can be like little bulls in a china shop at times, and they're a bit more, let's kick ass, bear that in mind, no matter what the overall energy is or no matter what is said for your star sign, bear in mind that this week you will be prone to maybe being a little more in your face and bear that in mind when you speak to people, you know, not to scare them, <laughs> or use it if it is needed but remember Taurus energy is really strong because that's the star sign we're moving into right so let's have a look at the overall energy for the week ahead let's see what we got for all of us <laughs> okay <clears throat> the energy, overall energy for this week is, <laughs> what I'm getting is, to tell you that I have said that so many times, I have this mantra that I have had for probably 30 years. I wake up in the morning and I go, I'm awesome. And most of the time, nobody cares. <clears throat> but having um, a phrase that says, I'm awesome, which is an ego, which is me saying, you know what? It's going to be a good day and I can do anything I put my mind to. It, it's much harder than for problems to reach me and to take me down and tear down my energy. So that's the first thing I'm getting because what we have for all of us is what is called Earth School and jumping in. So in short, this is the week where life lessons that, are, that keep repeating right, are coming to the fore. So this is not new issues that we're dealing with, even though when they're there, we have to deal with them. This is more about realizing and, and maybe even reflecting on what you feel your purpose is. And without being frustrated, you probably should, should then say, as the old energy sort of says, because we have it jumping in, you know, I'm no longer interested in figuring stuff out. What I'm interested in, which is the Taurus, Taurus energy, is to actually do stuff. So. Feel who you are, be your true self. If you feel that, that you're not in the right job, that's the week to manifest uh, things new. Because jumping in means, you know, you're ready for an adventure and you will go there regardless of what your reality tells you. So in short, the over energy for all of us is to be adventurous, trust that lessons in life that haven't been learned yet will come your way so be prepared uh, for this um, but it's not meant as a negative thing it just means like that you know now is a time to pay attention to crossroads and then obviously since we're having jump in here um, you basically have to embrace change and because change is coming and remember i always say that change is the only constant in the universe so don't be afraid of change embrace it but also realize that what doesn't work is if you have or, or need a plan or I need to have this sorted out and then when this happens I do this. It doesn't work that way because then you're chasing things rather than going with the flow. So this week let's all go with the flow um, because this is a real good week since issues are coming up um, for our soul growth to really continue. Right? That was the overall energy. Now we're going into the very first star sign of the week which is Aries. Okay, so I'm just going to ask the cards. Um, 
Oh, we've got one that's jumped out at me. Can't remember. Oh, there, there. <laughs> there so, is sorry, it. I to use my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So that's definitely meant for Aries and, and very um, like Aries, you know, full of sort of fire uh, and passion. So, yeah, I, I think that even though Aries is sort of full of passion and fire and energy, I am going to say it's time for Aries to be a little bit more realistic, you know, and I think that with the spring coming, they're going to feel that force of energy and, and, and you, it just naturally comes as the sort of the plants and the flowers are growing. Um, I think that things will change quite quickly if you are an Aries. We've got the Knight of Fire here, which is passionate, adventurous, self-assured and restless. It's a very Aryan card anyway, full of confidence and energy. Um, so I'm going to warn you that, you know, as as we've said, that, you know, lessons are going to be learned and you've got to be ready. Um, opportunities are going to come your way, but you've got to be grounded and realistic with that. So there might be a sudden event that needs immediate attention. Um, time is of the essence and think, I would like you now to think things through carefully. And that's not typically very Aryan. So I'm giving you that advice to stay quite grounded. The second card that we've got following on is the Knight of Air. So I'm telling you to use your intellect, be intelligent, be decisive. So again, we've got this decisiveness, but with a grounded energy around it, you know, be idealistic, go for those goals that you've always wanted to go for, but have your feet on the ground. Um, events will occur with great speed. Again, we've got a lot of movement at the moment. Um, but do take time, don't do things in haste. Um, it's a very Aryan thing to rush, you know, a lot of my Aryan friends move at the speed of light. So I'm just telling you, the devil is in the detail. Look at all the information, look at all the facts. Um, take time to carefully review your options and consider creative solutions. Thank you very much, that was Aries. Now we're going into the star sign that is also officially the star sign for, for next week which is Taurus coming in on the 21st officially. This is the next star sign that we're looking at. Here is what we got for Taurians. Let's have a look. Taurians, I mentioned in the oval energy that it is a Taurian trait. My father is a Taurian and, and so is my sister, I love him dearly, but they can be a handful <laughs> to work with. So Taurians like to get things done and there's nothing wrong with it. But you have the river otter and the ocelot. And river or otters are holding hands so that nobody drifts away. And the ocelot is an animal that looks at a that, that climbs trees and then looks from above, which means you need this week you need a vantage point from which to assess your life. And you need to make sure that you are a team player. Now a team player does not mean that you should um go with any team and go along with anything that is being said. If anything doesn't sit right with you, your Taurian, Tor you will say it. <coughs> but your real task this week, April the 19th to the 25th, is to guide the people that are in your so-called unit, the people that you live with, the people that are in your life, the people that are close to you, and guide them through life by being the example that people need and and you are very spiritual it goes without saying and I think what I'm getting here as well is even though the author is saying let's just get a vantage point to assess um, a lot of people are counting on you whether or not you know it and you will always attract people who are probably a bit needy because they can they can feel that you're a person that is sort of you know you have tons of advice inside you, so it's not going to be going to take you a day to, to write things out for them. So therefore, with that energy, you attract people. And what the guides are saying to you is, and this is just what, what I'm getting <coughs> for Taurians, and you will know who you are when you hear it. My feeling is that now is the time. Because in the over energy we had change, and change is the only constant in the universe, and we were asked to embrace change. This is the time to decide on what to do with your life and my feeling is that there's some of you may be a crossroads whether or not the spiritual side should be more of a thing or the other side and one of the things that you will notice is the moment you divide your time you also divide your energy 
you cannot attract 100% to something that you only give 50% of energy. And that's what the guides are saying to you this week. Um, that's what the vantage point comes in. Right? Be a team player, but at the same time, pay attention to your needs and your wants, and first and foremost, your desires, and then literally manifest changes to get that life going that you really would want. Right? That was Torians going to the next star sign, which is Gemini. Okay, um, should I read for Taurus? I just did Taurus. Okay, right, sorry, Gemini, sorry. Um, yeah, so thinking about Gemini, um, I'm feeling a sort of quite the opposite, an adverse um, sensation to Aries, because actually um, there's a need for you to actually rest and to consider what your next move is. Um, there's, I think with Gemini's, there's always, you know, that, that need to be on the go. And there's a love of negotiating very complex, difficult situations. But I get a sense that we're all going in different directions from this point onwards. And I think that actually this is a part of your vocabulary. But what I'm telling you to do is take time to rest, um, which is quite difficult for you to do because you want to be on the go. Um, I think that you need a little bit more time to process and to make a decision and meditate if, if at all possible. I see there's a lot of change um, and dreams coming true around romance actually. Um, and again, because you're so good and adept at dealing very, with very complex um, interpersonal relationships, um, I think there's a sense of there's been too much going on in the last year. There's been a little bit of a meltdown. And I think you need to stand back um, and just take stock of what's going on and prepare for that change and that new direction. I am, again, going to give you romantic dreams potentially coming true and that change of direction. Thank you very much. Okay. What we notice, and I said that every single week, um, and this, we have done uh, over 100 videos, so you probably uh, um, have heard that so many times, but we have overlapping energy, which means that oftentimes the star sign is sort of affected by the star sign before, and some of the energies and some of the messages can be quite similar, yet slightly different, because, you know, your, your um, planet has a different movement when you were born, so it's different things apply to you. And now we're moving into Cancer, and... Cancers also, Cancerians, also have the um, relationship energy coming in. You have the companion and the dancer of frustration, which means while it is time for you to get ready in the sense of if you do have relationships, more intimate ones is what the guys are talking about here, um, make sure you don't test things. Make sure you're not saying, like, oh, let's see where this is going. You either give 100% or it might not work, right? When you give 100%, which is also very cancerian, you don't do things half-assed, right? Then yes, you could, you could get hurt, but you can't throttle back just to stay safe. So what I'm getting for cancerians is <clears throat> that the companion is very much ready to come in. And generally speaking, Normally, when the when the, the, the shamanic deck that I have here um, is mentioned in the companion, it could also be other types of people. What I'm getting, energetically speaking here, is really a love relationship, right? So I'm sorry if they exclude the non uh, um, or, or, the, or the single Cancerians, but this is just the way it is this week, and unfortunately you're not changing topic, which means I, I won't be getting anything <laughs> for a single um, Cancerians, apart from the fact that, when, that what they said just now is, is for you to, to allow yourself to give 100% in order to also receive 100%, which is sort of for, for all of you, right? But you have the dancer of frustration, which is related not necessarily to the new relationship, because this is also about people who have been in a relationship for a long time. And the dancer of frustration basically means that there are areas, which there often are in relationships, you know, that, <laughs> so you have to say the way I get it, 
piss you off. <laughs> you know, they're not, they're not great. And all the guys are saying, instead of, because dancing means pussyfooting. Am I, uh, will I say something, will I not? And all the guys are saying is always be truthful because, and this is the point, because you still want to make changes to the, to the relationship and because you're still willing to talk, there's still love. So allow yourself um, to clarify the areas where you're not happy, which also relates to the fact that if this is a new relationship or a new relationship could be just around the corner, so you single cancerians also pay attention, if that makes sense, you will definitely, because that's the energy I'm getting, you will bring some frustration to the party, right? So, and remember, the, the overall energy was about life lessons. It could well be for cancerians that one, so one of your life lessons is to understand that to a certain extent, to a large extent, you know, the older you get at least, we're all damaged goods, right? There's all, we all carry a lot of baggage and we bring it into any new relationship. What the guides are saying to you is to make sure you're not judging someone on the actions of someone who came before, right? So that's what I'm getting for Cancerians. The reason why they're sort of dragging it out is because I'm, I'm sensing um, a lot of frustration in the energy of Cancerians. And when life lessons are coming and Taurian energy is the, is, the more, is the most prominent of all, and we're heading towards a, a, new, a full moon, which is happening on the 27th, the week after, but towards the end of the week, we will feel that energy as well. So frustration, if it gets worse means you will not be able to communicate right and so bear that in mind you know always make sure you're calm before you converse make make uh, make sure you're calm before you address any issues but also wholeheartedly enjoy and manifest that companionship that you are longing for because cancerians and it sounds a bit sounds a bit weird but Energetically speaking, you're not a star sign that is very happy on your own. You like to share, if that makes sense. Right? So that's all I'm getting for Cancerians. The other thing the guides give me sort of before we move on um, to the next star sign, Leo, which would be your turn. Um, remember that when you have um, an energy, when you bring an energy to, to, to anything, that um, is already frustrated, the other party cannot open up because they can sense your frustration. Therefore, they're probably more on the defensive side, which already would, would send a, a totally different um, energy to what they were trying or hoping to portray when you uh, first engage, so to speak. Right? So, that was Cancerians. I know it was all about Cancerians in relationships, but I only work here. <laughs> and now we're going into the next star sign, which is Leo. Okay, so um, what I've got here is um, there's a lot of decisiveness, but and I feel that this is across the astrological chart as well. There's the energies drained. There's been a lot of draining. So people have felt a lot of drained of the past few months, and we're sort of coming out of that. And, and I think with the change of season as well, People are just sort of re-evaluating things and saying, you know what, I need to bring about that change. Um, and I think for Leos, Leos are very good at unpicking and unpacking things and looking at things objectively because they're not afraid. Um, they're leaders and they're, they're not afraid of difficult adult conversations. So they're going to start to unpick and unpack um, things in their life that aren't working. And they're going to start to consider those unwise choices and the people around them that don't have their best interests at heart. Um, and they're going to start to think about lessons being learned and people's motives. And it might be that you might need to hemorrhage a few friends, actually, and cut them off. Um, because you're starting to realise I'm going in this direction. You're a strong leader. You've got that strong sort of sun energy. Uh, but at the same time, you're either in or you're out and you haven't got time to mess around. And I love that about the Leo energy. Um, can be a little bit overbearing sometimes. So just manage those strengths. Um, so once you've done a little bit of sort of taking stock and clearing and a bit of spring cleaning within, uh, within your sort of life and your purpose and your motives, 
you'll think, right, okay, um, and, and we see the magician card, and we're thinking, okay, you can really go for it now. Now you're ready to spread your wings and show your light, um, but you have to do that sort of house clearing and then the cleaning before you do that. Um, so once you are ready, we've got that sort of magic energy around you, which is very natural for a Leo as well, because it's all that natural confidence that you know just exuberates out of you and you do have the resources I, i'm here to tell you now that you do have those resources and the ability to manifest so it's all about manifestation any business plans any plans you know um, any people that you wanted in your life any jobs that you wanted to do any any sort of goals hopes and dreams now is the time to do it for you thank you very much that was leo going into virgo virgo will be short and sweet because what happened is when you have these animal cards that I work with, it's the very first deck that ever came to me. I have no idea um, who made it because I threw the box away 15 years ago. <laughs> you got the wolf and all these animals individually on these cards or the animals that represent certain um, messages, they're called deities. And what you have, Virgos, is you have all deities at once. So what the guides are saying to you is, with the wolf being your animal guide for the week, your spirit guide, spirit animal guide for the week, don't be a loner because although wolves tend to focus best in a hierarchy, right? Because there's a, there's a pack um, and, and wolves like to have a pack, which means you don't be a loner. <clears throat> what I'm getting for you is, <clears throat> excuse me, is to realize that you, uh, your canine traits is who you truly are. So the ability to not having to be aggressive, but observe first, and also the, the, the imagery that I'm having, that the guys are giving me in my head, is of a, of a wolf doing this, which is... The, the, the symbol for let's play, I'd rather play with you. Um, so it's not submission, but it's like let's play. Um, so in other words, this is a week for, for Virgos to um, look at all and every situations that you could be in that are coming your way this week, because remember, over energy was life lessons. Um, look at them without frustration, look at them without worries. Look at them in a way, sounds a bit weird, a child would probably look at something new that has no preconceived notion at what this new thing can do or did in your past. So, you know, it sounds a bit weird when the, when the guys ask you to be in charge uh, this week because this is the week of change. So, and, and when change is coming your way, it's hard to be in control because um, we, we're not supposed to control anything. But I'm getting this word, um, you know, Wolfpack being in charge. In other words, just go with the flow, be playful, but also remember that you have the ability to lead a pack. And if there isn't a pack, lead your life as if you were a pack, right? So make sure you rely on your, you, you can rely on yourself um, and that other people that you, that you care for um, or care about they already have figured out that they can rely on you because you're always there, which is another very canine trait. There's this issues that, that canines do have um, of uh, being on their own. There's a couple of, of um, exceptions, obviously, you know, of scavengers who normally do things on their own because there's just not enough opportunities. But on a whole, um, canines and wolves, therefore, um, which are the ancestors of our sort of dogs, um, are much more interested in living together, grouping together, doing things together and experiencing things together. Um, and that's the other message here for Virgos this week. Reach out, but reach out playfully. Right? If someone says, oh, I haven't got time for you this week, they, they might not be bad people. They might just not have time for you this week, if that makes sense. right? And when you're playful, rather than saying like, F you then, <laughs> because that's not what I'm getting for, for, for Virgos. Um, it's just like, yeah, all right, I'll catch up with you next week, right? So don't let things get to you that are not even meant to hurt you, right? 
So that's what I'm strongly getting for, for Virgos. And now we're going to the next star sign, which is Libra. We're looking at the week of April the, the 19th to the 25th, 2021. I always say that, please, please, please subscribe. And please, 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 please share the video widely. I don't know what's wrong with all of you. I say that every week. And then, you know, a hundred people are watching the video and three people share it. Duh. <laughs> right? so, so please share it because, you know, there might be other people out there. If it resonates with you, it might resonate with someone else. So please share the video <coughs> widely. So, talked enough. Let's go to Libra. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Librans, what I'm seeing is quite interesting for you. I mean, you are the kings and queens of balance and diplomacy. But even you've been struggling of late to manage people. Um, and you felt a little bit like you were holding back the floodgates and there's been a lot of difficult challenges around you. Um, and maybe in particular romantic affairs, um, but also just friendships have needed very careful handling. And it's been quite tiring. Um, but I'm here to tell you that things are going to change and, and the difficulty that you've been ha having with others is sort of going to sort of calm down a little bit. And we've got the Sun card, which is one of my favourite. It's the Leo energy, really. And it just tells you that all of your fears will soon be abated. It's a happy outcome. Those brilliant ideas that lead to success. So have a bit more confidence in yourself. I think you've navigated and negotiated yourself through a very difficult time. And you're coming out the other side of it. So I just want to congratulate you. Um, and then moving on again, we've got more sort of achievements. So I feel like for a year or so, you've had to have your head down and just, you know, work really diligently and hard. And there hasn't been much reward. But what we see now is you coming out of this. Um, and this is, I would say that this is in relation to work and your career and um, maybe more professional endeavours. There's a sense of brilliance about it. And there's being impartial, quite professional. And diplomatic but this is the key word for Librans you know you're always very diplomatic whereas you know I'm Sagittarius and I'm hot-headed I think that Librans are very sort of level-headed and calm and you you know we can all learn a lot from you and so you're going to come back into your own um, so it's about that balance you know as we know with the scales you know speaking your mind with confidence and you know also getting that professional advice so going back and looking at the frameworks within which you're working and balancing mental and emotional consideration so well done whatever difficulties you've been dealing with you are coming out of that and seeing the other side thank you very much now we're going to the next star sign of scorpio some of you remember that a couple of months ago i, I broke a rib and it's it's healed well but every time i'm sitting on the bloody settee I get still some, some pain here, so I know um, half my head is missing, but who cares? <laughs> um, now we're going to Scorpio. The first thing I should say, or, or, or feel I would like to say to Scorpios, is to remember this week how powerful you are, how strong you are, and how important it is for you to watch your actions and your inactions, because your star sign is obviously called a Scorpio. <laughs> to be fair, it was, it was named by the ancient Greek and it was a, a, a Scorpio that didn't make it. <laughs> so, right? so I'm just saying it, um, it, it, it may not yield that much of an energy and yet it does because it is the energy of an entire star sign. And Scorpios are interesting creatures in that the the taller they stand, the less poison they have. Right? The smaller they are, the more toxin uh, or, or poison is in their tail. And what I'm getting for you is to stand tall. And when you are saying, I know I'm powerful, and it's not meant in an ego way at all, but I am powerful. I know that my, my expertise and my view on life is valuable. As long as you know it and you stand tall, you don't need your poison, right? If that makes sense. Mm. So the reason why this comes up is because um, you have here, um, in a way, absorbing what's not yours. That's the phrase that's on that card. And if you are 
sifting off stuff that isn't for you. There might be a void. There also may be the feeling of, I have been used, because that's the words my guides um, are using here. Um, and all the guides are saying is, welcome to the club. Right? We're all here to learn, we're all here to evolve, and, and yes, we all meet people we wish we rather hadn't, <laughs> if that makes sense, yeah. and yet you meet people in situations for a reason. They're here just for you to learn, right? Which is always easier said than done when, when, when the universe says, you know, be grateful for the lesson and, 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 and send them on their way. You know, when people mess with you, it's not that yeah. easy because we're human. But that's what they're saying to you this week. If you just stand tall and realize that maybe not everybody is your friend, right? So be it. But you are valuable. Because what, what they're asking you to do this week is to really look into... Oh, it sounds weird. Who loves you? You know, it's Kojak, you know, who loves you, baby? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know? So rather than, than, than feeling this feeling of... Um, I am powerful, but I only, I'm also powerful because I feel I need to protect myself. There's this powerful uh, energy of don't come near me, right? Which is what, the, what they talked about when they initially explained the Scorpio. <clears throat> what they're saying to you is, you're actually at crossroads and new portals, so to speak, of spiritual growth are opening as we speak. And the overall energy was all about change. right? So again, you, you're a star sign that will feel the change very, very strongly. And yet, the main energy that the universe wants you to experience this week in order for you to learn to stand tall is how much you are loved. And here's, here's the, the trick. Um, I know from the, from the feedback that I'm getting for the videos that a lot of people, um, when they're single and then a reading like this comes up, uh, they say, nobody loves me. That's not true. That's, that is never true because you will, you will have a lot of people, even if it is the person next door where you buy your bread, they remember you kindly, yeah. right? So yeah. just because you have not yet been um, unfortunate enough to have that relationship, for instance, right? Um, they're asking you to realize that it starts with self-love because you attract on your energy. If your energy is low, you attract people with low energy. That's the, that's the way where you, uh, the universe works. Right? If you are down in the dumps, the guides sit there and go, okay, we would love to help, but we can only help when this person decides not to be that way, because there's nothing they can do. You have free will. And if your free will ends up in depression, which is a chemical imbalance, so I'm not saying it's not there and it's not in your mind, don't hear this wrong, but it all starts with realizing if I can't see my worth. If I can't see how much I, I, I should love myself, how can I expect others to love me? If that makes sense. And it is an interesting energy that I'm getting from the guides because they're also asking you to go back into self-nurturing. Okay, so the, <laughs> just, the way they show it to me is like, you know, you go back into a time when you uh, were, were a teenager and, and you had that one song that you always listened to when there was a, wasn't a care in the world. So you ask, I can't say the word, otherwise she, 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 she switches on, you know, the, the, the Amazon lady, you know. <laughs> so you ask her or you just uh, YouTube it um, and you just play that one song over and over again that you played when you had no care in the world. And if you're that person that wants to, you know, dance around the living room or play air guitar, whatever you want to do, that's one of the quickest ways to reconnect to you because you reconnect to your, to your younger self and it is easy enough to say, like, I'm going to be my younger self today, right? Yes, oftentimes people put a, put a damper on it. You know, every time I'm my younger self, someone reminds me of my mid-50s. <laughs> it's just one of those things, you know. But the point is, I can be as young as I want to feel. And that's, again, what I'm getting for Scorpio, is to, is to not get yourself down energetically and realizing first and foremost you are valuable you are a person that's that once you stand tall um that's when people pay attention right that's that's yeah. another thing about about humans is that uh we tend to as a, as, a, as a species we tend to go where authority is now authority might not ever it might not always be good 
we know that too, right? So people have to learn to stand up, that's for sure. But if someone shows strength, we are drawn to them because we have moments of weakness. And all the universe is trying to say to you, like, but every emotion you can possibly feel is important. And this week for Scorpios, all they're saying to you is, allow yourself to deeply love yourself and acknowledge the people in your life that love you deeply so that you can realize you're not as alone as you think. Now that's all sounded much more depressing as it was meant to sound. But there are some of you out there, some Scorpios out there, who struggle with self-esteem. And all the guides are saying is, in order for you to get help with your self-esteem, you first have to realize that it needs to be changed. And you need to be good to yourself. And if you say in the morning, I love myself, that's a really strong and powerful thing to say to you. Right? I'm awesome. I love myself. I'm enough. There's tons of stuff you can do, right? And that's what I'm getting for Scorpio. Sorry for, for, for rambling on. <laughs> and now we're going to the next star sign of Sagittarius. Yeah, and just as Thomas was saying, I think there's different forms of love as well. And uh, I think we can be a bit obsessed with romantic love when mm -hmm. there's so much love around us. If we, you know, your family members, you might have a niece and nephew that is that completely adores you and um, just friends that wouldn't, you know, couldn't, exist without you and I think that we if we tap into that and harness that we realize that it's infinite really and um it's all around us and your pets yes and your don't pets forget, as don't well forget your yeah pets. and it, yeah and as Thomas said the person in the shop that looks forward to seeing you every day so um yeah and so with that we're going to move on to Sagittarius and which is obviously my sign um I'm a Virgo in ascendancy which is a very complicated uh sign because I'm a free-spirited control freak so I wouldn't wish that on anyone but anyway um Sagittarius is I'm I'm just looking here and it's quite hopeful actually um because you know typical Sagittarian always putting your foot in it all of the time and there's that eccentricity which I love about Sagittarius we you know we we're always the sort of dark horse in the sense that we'll always go too far um, and we'll always have to be sort of told to tone it down a little bit but I think um, this is the time for you to go too far and really sort of revel in that eccentricity um, it's time to shine your light really and um, so there's a lot of plans, you know, typical, typical Sagittarius, you've got a million and one things to do, you probably won't get them all done in this lifetime, you know, your bucket list this long, etc. So I am going to say just have a little bit of caution and I think you need to go back to all of those goals and targets and start thinking about them and um, unpicking them and working through them and just thinking, okay, what is it that I really want to do? So I want you to prioritise Sagittarius um, because I can just feel that sort of that energy that enthusiasm that's um, boundless um, you know and I think you know really go back to that go back to all the thinking and the planning that you've done and start to really focus it and firm it up a little bit but I do see um, if any of you are single or wanting more commitment in your relationships I do see that just that that commitment if you want it you will get it um, and I see obviously out of lockdown but I see more socializing more events um, and obviously as Sagittarians we're not happy unless we're out there in the world you know interacting and engaging with others that's you know we just can't seem to function without people and also um, that sense of attention and feeling like a celebrity there's a lot of uh, you know exhibition is exhibitionism with Sagittarians so this is time for you to get out there a little bit um, and yeah, and I'd also say this might be the time for those crazy hair-brained schemes to be sort of um, brought into <coughs> the forefront and for you maybe to turn your hand at a new business or an idea. So all the things that people might have sort of laughed at you or joked about um, in the past, um, they, they might actually come to fruition. And so um, I want you to really go for it, you know, um, don't, don't let those ideas and those, that kookiness about you, don't let, let that be dismissed anymore, because I feel like we're coming into the time where, you know, the economy is changing, the world is changing, 
and you were just a little bit ahead of your time. So <laughs> this, this might now be the time for you to come into your own and, and be your, your true, kooky, quirky self and just go for it. And it might be that, you know, that all those sort of harebrained schemes that you sort of mentioned to your friends, you might put them into practice and they might make a lot of money. So go for it in that respect. Thank you very much. I am very drawn to one of your decks, which, okay. is why I, which is why I, I didn't use them. So, may I use this? You may, yes. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Okay, the under, the, uh, the, I always say that about overlapping energy. And what is interesting is that Sagittarius is the star sign before Capricorn, which is the star sign we're moving in now. And Sagittarius being sort of, um, Quite a powerhouse energy mm -hmm. and then you have capricorns which is a star side that can actually be less than confident at at times mm -hmm. and so um what the guides are saying to you is to remember that you don't exist in isolation and that the the, the best way to boost your confidence is by knowing who you truly are. The, the important thing is for you to, and this sounds a bit, you know, there's, there's what we call confirmation bias, because you see it, you see it everywhere. Mm -hmm. But um, when you are a spiritual person, you wouldn't, you wouldn't watch this if you weren't. And what they're saying to you is, if you just honor and acknowledge your spiritual side, you're halfway there, right? So look into your, your deeper side, even if you feel that the deeper side has gotten you hurt more than toughening up, because toughening up is just a term that people use um, because they probably have been conditioned to toughen up, right? This is the 21st century, this time we're coming back to, to feeling everything we can feel and, 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 and experience it all for what it is. So here's what the guides have for you. I was very drawn to that deck. I just didn't want to just yeah, go and grab yeah. it. <coughs> you, have, you have the guardian angels and the higher self, deceit and truth. Now deceit is a really hard word and I don't feel at all that there is deceit necessarily coming away. What that means in the context of Capricorns is that if you have people that you love dearly and that know you well, they know how to push your buttons. And they're not all bad people. People become opportunists. I always say that to people in readings. Um, I say to them, if you cooked for me five times a week, I let you. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. If you then say you can't do Mondays instead of being grateful for Tuesday to Friday, I would bitch and moan until you say, oh, poor Thomas. <laughs> so once people know how to push your buttons, they push them. Once you give, people take. It is not their fault if you have no boundaries for them. To, to, to cut a long story short, what, what is important this week for you is to remember two things. Number one, you are not alone. You are very much loved by the universe. You are very much surrounded by guides, which is really, really important. They're just waiting for you to say like, help, right? The moment you go into manifestation, the moment you look into cards, the moment you look into runes, palmistry, whatever comes your way, these are all little pathways to communicate deeper and more frequently with your guides. <coughs> the important thing is that you are being truthful this week to yourself. How do I truly feel? And here's the, the sort of the, the trick. Let your higher self answer every question and any question you may have, right? See things always from the highest point of view this week. And, and this is the other thing for uh, Capricorns. Expect people and tell them, because that's the other thing with Capricorns. If you're, if you're having a week where you're not confident, you're not putting people in their place. And sometimes people need to be put in their place. Right? It's a, when the German says it sounds much harsher than I need it. You know, <laughs> no, I agree. You know, but people sometimes need to be put in their place. And, you, and, and that is not a bad thing. It's just you saying, you know, you're overstepping your boundaries here, right? The things that I do for uh, out of the goodness of my heart. You, don't, you, you, you shouldn't really take them for granted, right? I decide if I want to cook tonight. 
This is mm. same with the cooking, must be hungry. <coughs> no, no. All the guys are saying is look at your higher self. And here's another really I mean interesting sentence that I'm getting and that I have used in the past a lot. <coughs> um and now it's sort of gone. <laughs> You're lucky, doesn't come to me anymore. <laughs> Well, it's just a really so important. High, was, self? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. yeah, just trying to find us again. You know, the, the higher <laughs> self. And then, anyway, there was a, there was a really interesting sentence that you just gave me, okay. and now it's bloody gone. And bottom line is, your higher self is the one that needs to be looked at. And if you realize that you deserve only the best, that's when people can only give you the best because you're not dealing with less, mm -hmm. right? So that's what I'm getting for for um, for Capricorns, really, 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 because this is a week where we're going through a lot of changes, and therefore, when you when you not you know not every Capricorn lacks in confidence, but <coughs> your 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 star sign energetically is one that can be easily unhinged, yeah, definitely. and that's what I'm getting for <coughs> for you this week um, to just realize, oh, I'm a bit more sensitive, right? So be more sensitive, but your higher self, your highest good, your deep intuition is what really, really, really um, should take over this week, right? So that's all we got for, for Capricorn. We got Aquarius and uh, Pisces left. Since Pisces is my star sign, I'm going to be quiet for the next couple of minutes <laughs> and ask you if you could do the last two star signs okay. because I don't, don't want to read my own oh, star okay. signs this week. Thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, so moving on to Aquarius. What's, what's really weird is that I know Aquarians aren't perfectionists generally um, and they're, very, they're always very good at, at sort of being detached and standing back and being objective and sort of um, having a little bit of a sort of sense of humour about things. Um, and, you know, I always think that if there's any sign that could sort of connect to the Palladians and, and space and outer space and all of that, it's Aquarian because they're, Aquarius, because they're naturally out there anyway. Um, so I, I, I see some sort of, there's been a little bit of perfectionism around you, probably out of anxiety and a little bit of stress. And, and I'm asking you to let go of that now because that's not the true Aquarius that I know. Aquarius are generally very, very free-spirited. You can't hold an Aquarian down. Even if you're trying to keep them in a room all day, they'll be somewhere else in their mind going off on one. So we wanna get your old self back and don't worry about the sort of the, the constant scrutiny of details and perfectionism. That's not really you, leave it to Virgo. Um, so let go of the fear now. Um, so I'm working a lot with Archangel Michael and I feel like Archangel Michael's very good at coming in and just removing a lot of indecision and things that we don't need. So um, I, I need to remind you that you are safe and you need to remove any sort of heavy, toxic, ego-based thoughts and feelings. It's not you. Let's get back to that free-spirited Aquarian. Um, romantic partnerships will flourish. There's a lot of that this week. I'm seeing a lot of progress with romance. Um, and again, back to those Aquarian strengths that um, anything that doesn't serve you, push it out of the way. Have that sense of humour. You know, if things don't go well, you're very good at um, looking at things from the lighter side of life and seeing the humour in a situation, even when it can be quite grave and serious. So get back to that. That's a real strength of yours. Um, and again, um, you know, we've had this in several of the cards um, and, and of the zodiac signs this week. Um, you know, we've got this falling in love again. So we've got lots of water, lots of romance, lots of cups. Um, and it's all to do with interpersonal relationships. It's probably what we're all longing for as well. Um, and there's that resurgence of a relationship and even friendships that you've maybe, you've had a few problems and setbacks and you might need to reconnect as well. So romantically and also platonically as well. There's a spiritual growth and enhanced intuition. So, and potentially new homes. So there's movement as well for Aquarians. I think Aquarians do love to move around. Um, they're quite good at being nomadic, quite similarly to Sagittarians. Okay, so 
We're going to move on now to Pisces. So I know Thomas doesn't want to read his own <laughs> sign. Um, so <coughs> Normally I have no choice, if that makes sense. Okay, right? yeah. It's just nice sometimes to, to hear yeah. other perspectives. Perspective, yeah. you know, kind of okay, so um, I, I think financially things are going to get better, if that reassures you. And um, I'm seeing that, you know, because there's been a lot of chaos um, in the planets and energetically, I think money can come from unexpected sources because the the order of the universe is changing from what I can see. Um, Pisceans, you know, are actually they're, they're a little bit misunderstood because people think of Pisceans as just dreamy, air, you know, water signs, quite emotional. But actually, Pisceans are real doers as well, um, and they're the doers because they're quite good at time management they're quite practical so this is the time we've got the king of fire here and this is the time for you to be motivational idealistic and i'm getting a real connection to people needing to get back to their dreams there's no point you know doing a, a job that is not bringing you fulfillment and not your, you know allowing you to attain your heart's desire and my advice to you is be idealistic you know aim high um Follow your heart and your dreams. It might have been a long time since you've done that. And I think you need to reconnect to that, you know, that younger self that was very idealistic. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, be ambitious, be charismatic. So I'm giving this, this advice to Pisces. Uh, focus, focus, focus. So communicate with vision and be that leader. Um, and I think that it's quite interesting because it's not your typical reading for a Piscean, but I think Pisceans are good leaders um, and they are creative, but they can be practically creative as well. And they really can put plans into action um, because there is a practical pers uh, perspective of, of Pisceans that we often miss. So again, it's all about logic and reason and leadership. Um, and really going for it at the moment, but in a sort of very Piscean, creative, intuitive way. Um, so we've got that money from the unexpected source. And then we've got this sense of you. So we've got the six of air here, which is journeys. But I see more of a metaphysical journey for you. I see more of a transformation of the soul and, and who you are. And um, I, I, I see this as being one of the most powerful um, readings of the, Zod the Zodiac because there's a real transformation around Pisces at the moment. You can probably feel it as well, that you're transform transforming as a person. Um, there might, so, you know, you're going for it, you're on that boat, you're sort of sailing off into the sunset, but then there might be a few things that hold you back. So there's, there might be some sort of poor timing all around you. So um, be prepared for some things, you know, while you're sort of moving in that direction, you're good to go, you've got all your plans uh, laid but there might be a few things that need tweaking and a few temporary standstill points. So it's important to be yourself and develop a sort of zen-like perspective, a very calm and sort of zen-like about the whole situation. And again, we've got humour coming into the Piscean reading for you. So I'm going to bring that to a close. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <coughs> Excuse me. So... That's all we have time for. You will probably have noticed that this is one of the longer videos.